welcome to the Science of Fiction. My name is David. I'm Dylan. And we are the Wet Rats. If you're joining us for the first time, this is a podcast where we look at different fictional universes and we try to break down all of the things that don't really add up, don't really make sense, anything that stands out and is weird. Um, we're not really here to like talk shit on the movies or like break apart the plot or look for plot holes necessarily. So we're not that kind of a podcast. But anyways, today we're talking about Indiana Jones. Um, in general. Just in general. Um, I will say, on our last few episodes, um, I didn't really re-watch anything to get ready for them. I actually meant to on our Marvel episode to like actually watch some of the Marvel mm-hmm. movies because I haven't seen that many. But then I got busy and didn't. So this time I wanted to actually go back and rewatch some of these. To be fair, I've seen the original Indiana Jones trilogy a lot. So I was pretty familiar with them, but I, it had been a while since 2 and 3 since I'd seen those. So I wanted to rewatch them. I also rewatched Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Which I did not. I still haven't seen that since theaters. Uh, this is the first time I had seen it since theaters. I went opening night, the night it came out. I was very excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was me, you, Luke, and Michelle? I think Josiah went. Oh, Josiah. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, I dressed up for it, <laughs> and it uh, wasn't very good. I don't think I need to inform our audience about that, but just in case you didn't know. I used to dress up for movies. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. Which is more embarrassing because, you know, some people are like, a lot of people dress up for movies. Not in a small town in Kansas, they don't. It was a thing, like, where we did it for a joke, but, like, no one knew it was a joke, so it was really only funny to us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We dressed up for Harry Potter really bad. Yeah. Um, we also dressed up and went to the Twilight DVD release. That's true. Um, although, did you go to that? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember if you were yeah, that. It was uh, Me, You, Hayes. Right, okay. And was that it? I thought there was one more. Uh, and it may be Josh or Josiah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, Anyways, no one cares about what we're talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what I was g- getting at is it had, been, it had been over 10 years since I'd seen Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because it came out over 10 years ago, oh, I think 2007. Man. Or was it 2008? I think it was 2007. Yeah. Um, so it's been over 10 years, so I rewatched it, and I know we're not here to talk about like the movies or review them or whatever, but what I'll say about that movie is, in some ways... It's not as bad as I remember, and in other ways, it's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> there, that movie has a couple of moments where you're like, this kind of feels like old Indiana Jones. Yeah. But at the same time, it has so many moments where you're like, what the fuck is this? Right. Who thought this should work? But anyways, we'll get to Crystal Skull last. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go through each movie briefly and just kind of talk about anything that stands out from that one. So we're going to start with Raiders. Um because, again, the way we do the show is we look at, like, kind of the weirder stuff in fictional universes and stuff that doesn't really make as much sense. So we actually aren't talking about most of the movies because anything that's, like, an action scene, you know, is just an action scene. These movies are pretty grounded in reality until number four. Um, especially even if you look at the first one, honestly, it's entirely grounded in reality until, like, the very end. I mean, that's like, how most of them way, really are. Yeah, yeah, most of them are kind of – I mean, I guess Temple of Doom, not so Temple much. Temple of Doom, not so much. Um but yeah, for the most part, it's less like, hey, this is, I mean, true to its form. Mm-hmm. Archaeologists looking for artifacts. Yeah, and like, like actual that's... sitting, like, yeah. real timeline, like actual, mm-hmm. like, you know, the 40s, like, Nazis or thing. Like, it's meant to have And I feel actual... like that's probably what made, like, the ending of Indiana Jones more surprising, because you just, up to that point, you didn't know anything crazy was going to happen. Yeah, so exactly. So it would be like, oh, shit. Uh, which I think what they were going for in number four, because they're like, let's up the antes even more. Yeah. Now you know there's something weird at the end. What about something really weird? And right. And it's like, nah. Yeah, but I guess at that point, there's so many weird things already happening in the beginning of that movie, though. Yeah. That's Which like, I think is part of the problem. I think if yeah. maybe they had held on a little bit longer, right. it would still be out of place, but it would be a little bit more like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Right. I didn't think they would actually go there. But at the beginning, they're like, no, we're going to go there. Yeah. And then they tease you, like, maybe we won't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, just back to the Ark of the Covenant. So that's the main thing we're going to talk about for the first movie. Um, it's pretty much the only thing. I guess really briefly, um, and this sort of applies to the Temple of Doom as well, but there's the big snake pit. And we talked about this a little bit before. Because um, my question was, and I saw other people online say this, why is there a room that's just full of so many snakes? Yeah. And because we talked about like obviously you know snakes could still get in there. It's not like they've always been there, just you know breeding from three hundred years ago. Like some snakes would be getting in, getting out. Um, maybe they would have food in there. Maybe you know we said maybe there's some rats in there. I don't know if it'd be enough to feed that many snakes. Yeah, because but like I guess snakes don't need to eat that. What much. they're insinuating is like those snakes have been there for like a long time. Like yeah. that's like a breeding ground for. And again, maybe that's why they keep going there because of breeding. I don't know. But you think after a while, rats would just learn not to go there anymore. Yeah, like animals aren't retarded. Right. Um, um, but also, you brought up a good point, which is like, but it's a dark 
place. Why would snakes always be in there? Yeah. Like, these are snakes that are from that part of the world, world. meaning that they need the sun, sun. and heat. Like, yeah. I mean, all snakes do. But, you know, some snakes will, like, burrow underground. Right. Other snakes that are more aquatic, but these aren't those kind of snakes. Yeah, they like desert snakes. These are snakes, snakes that should yeah. be out in the sun yeah. for the most of, most of their day. I mean, maybe they all... This, it is night when they go, so maybe uh, they're all out, but I don't see a scene where they're digging up and they're like, holy shit, there's a hundred snakes that just came out <laughs> <Yeah>. of the ground. <laughs> um, and I, before, just in case anybody wants to comment and be like, well, yeah, but that's just because it's a movie. Like, we know, but we know. we're... That's, we're, the that's, point. Why we're, that's, that's not, literally the point of the podcast. Yeah. Is, we know it's a movie. That's got to explain every answer we ask. Right. But, but, but that, that's, that's why I say we're not here to talk shit, because we're not saying, like, this movie sucks because of the snake pit. Yeah. No, it's a great fucking movie. We, we love all the movies we talk about, except for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But um, we're just here to, like, poke fun at the details, really. The, I mean, and the snake thing also goes with the bug hallway in the second one, um, which I think is really funny because it's one hallway next to Willie's room. None of the bugs seem to get into her room. You could argue, well, there's a wall in the way. Yeah, but when do walls really stop bugs? Like, bugs get in. Yeah. They just get in. Um, houses have walls and bugs get the fuck in. Yep. And also, there's a breeze coming through. That's how they know that there's a secret passageway there. We see the breeze on the flowers. So bugs, if there's a breeze getting through, bugs can fucking get through. Yeah. Um, but I just love that it's it's not just like, this is a hallway filled with cockroaches or filled with ants. It's every bug. Yeah. Every bug in the fucking world is only in this one hallway. They're not in the caves. They're not in the mines. Just this hallway. Um, they're not even in the room with the spikes. that They go right next to the hallway. They're stuck in that one little space, um, which I just think is funny. Um also, that scene's still very discomforting. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember liking Temple Doom a lot uh-huh. as a kid. And I don't know why now that I'm an adult, because it, just, it has so many things I would hate. Yeah. Like, a hallway full of bugs, gross dinner scenes. Like, what did I like about this movie as a kid? It, it's, um, it kind of makes me wish, I mean, to be fair, he did Jaws, but it kind of makes me wish Spielberg would do, like, a legit horror movie. Yeah. Because rewatching Temple of Doom, like, you see... Because that, if anybody knows much about movies, that is one of the movies that was very big about pushing the PG-13 rating to exist. Because um, that movie is fucking crazy. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, bugs, I mean, sure, that's not necessarily like an R thing, but it's it's something that's kind of frightening. Yeah. And the, the yeah, the part where they're eating he all does, the crazy stuff. He does stuff. a lot of grotesque things for the sake of gro- yeah. grotesque. Yeah. Well, then, of course, the big one is the heart ripping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a guy getting lowered to his screaming yeah, death in yeah. fire. Also, child slavery. That movie's dark. Yeah. Very dark. Um, but that's one of the reasons I think it'd be fun to see Spielberg do like a... I guess you could argue he kind of did Poltergeist. Yeah. There's, you know... But that's all another subject. Anyways, um, we were supposed to be talking about the Ark. <laughs> um, so the Ark of the Covenant, um, obviously that's based on the real Ark of the Covenant. Um, but the real Ark, according to the Bible, um, doesn't have like the powers it does in this film, of mm-hmm. course. Uh, but I tried to look up, like, does it have any powers? And it is stated somewhere in the Bible. I didn't fucking read the Bible before this. Um but it is stated somewhere in there that it has some supernatural powers. So I guess the filmmakers were like, oh, that's good enough. I guess ghosts come out of it then. Uh, so I guess that's what I want to talk about is what does happen at the end of this movie? Like what actually comes out of the thing? Yeah. So they open it up. Supposedly inside the Ark, according to the films, is the original Ten Commandments that were destroyed. Um, and then, you know, a second one had to be made. So that supposedly, according to the movie, this is the original destroyed Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And that's supposedly it, according to the movie. Now, the real arc is a little different, but that's besides the point. Um, so, they open it up, and it's not the Ten Commandments that we see. It's a bunch of sand, and then ghosts come out of it. We assume ghosts. Some yeah. kind of spiritual in, in, yeah. entities. And at first, they're beautiful, and then they turn hellish, I guess you could say, or uh, evil-ish, and massacre all of the people there, aside from Indy and Marion. Um, so what is that? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say that they're Nazis, so it's like, oh, well, you guys aren't worthy, we're going to kill you? Yeah. But, I mean, because any of them didn't look, they also didn't get killed, but we, but, so we're assume that if they did look, they would also die, but they're not evil. Either. Yeah, so that's something I saw discussed online, um... Because some people said, and we'll kind of, this is a theory we have similar to the third one, but some people were saying that 
Maybe it doesn't matter that they didn't look. That was just an extra thing that they just in case. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they would have been fine because they weren't there for evil purposes. Yeah, and maybe yeah, maybe the eyes because like you said, they come out being beautiful, not like Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden like oh. It almost seems like they come out to be like, hey, what's up? Oh, it's evil dudes, and then they turn evil and kill all the people, almost like they're being judged. Yeah, you know, will of God or wrath Mm -hmm. of God or whatever you want to call it. Um, Because I guess this movie is is going with the idea of like very Old Testament, very like. Kind of cruel God. I also forgot that guy dresses up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that guy has a great costume yeah, on. He does. Um, but. Uh, I think they're like, they just came out like, damn, that's offensive, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have a clear answer. Yeah, because I, I mean, I guess does. the only thing I think of is, is judgment. Like, it just, I mean, if it's the commandments, that makes sense. Like, yeah. Oh, you're not gonna, now you're going to be judged. Okay, you're not worthy. Now you're dead. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the easiest way to look at it. I, I don't know, like... What are you like, the art for again? Huh? Oh, because he could, like, destroy mountains or whatever. Yeah, so according to the movie, it has the yeah. power to, like, level mountains, which is not in the Bible, <laughs> uh, at least as far as I read. I mean, I, um, just, I think it's... I just like the idea of, like, oh, uh, inside this box is a bomb. It's going to blow up so many things. Right. Tight, I'm going to open it up. Like, no, <laughs> you're going to die, too. Yeah, the picture they show in the film is uh, people holding, holding it, um, and lightning is shooting out of it. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's what they thought would happen. Lightning would come out, come of, out it, of it, or magic. But do they think like they were just going to be immune to it? I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that's supposed to be like the uh, their folly is like not you know not taking it seriously enough, like yeah. thinking that it did have the powers they wanted, but not. I mean, that's kind of a theme, I guess, in all the films. Yeah, is they all these evil people want these things, but don't really respect them. Um, What's the line in Jurassic Park where it's like you just used what other people did? You didn't, you had the tools, but you didn't. You have the discipline that came with getting those tools or whatever. I don't remember that. I butchered that line. I think I think it's a clever girl. Oh, that's right. Um, that's the paraphrase version. Anyways, I think that's it for the first one. Let's talk about Temple of Doom. So again, as we said in the first movie, it basically says that like according to these films, like uh, God, you know, in the traditional sense that we think of God, um, Israel. Um, and, you know, the Ten Commandments are real, and all that stuff is real. The second one kind of insinuates that Hindu gods are real as well. Um, because, similar to the first one, we see... At first, everyone's skeptical. Like, in, you know, in the first one, Indiana Jones is like, this arc isn't anything. And then at the end, he's like, oh shit, it is. Same with the second one, where he's like, oh, it's magic rocks. And everyone's like, oh, it's magic rocks? And yeah. everybody, like, scoffs. But they are magic, we find out at the end. They yeah. actually have uh, powers and abilities. Um... Supposedly, according to the movie, these rocks were uh, from Shiva. They were given to uh, Shankara, I think was the name, because they're called, I think, the Shankara Stones. Um, and then there's also the all the the demonic people or evil people are worshiping Kali, who is the goddess of destruction, um, which is not really to- totally correct to real Hindu lore. Apparently, like it is, Kali is the god of destruction, mm-hmm. but. Doesn't want like human sacrifices and isn't like yeah. I don't think evil, evil and demonic. Yeah, I don't think Hindu gods are evil. So. Um, yeah, although I guess you could make the argument that maybe these are people that have misinterpreted that and are doing sure. their own thing. This, they aren't really following Kali's will. Right. They are like a weird organization. I mean, the Kali, same way that like some real cults think that they're sent by God, even mm-hmm. though they're fucking crazy people. Right. Right. Um, That's true. But I'm not going to try to defend the movie too much. I mean, because I guess it is pretty I guess it makes. I mean, I guess. It could be in a way of like, yeah, Kali's the goddess of destruction, so obviously she has destructive powers. Yeah, and they're taking the artifacts and using it in malice ways rather than like, right? I mean, I don't know what good way you do destruction, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's kind of like like those crazy cool things. Like, yeah, they take that power and like, just like the arc, the arc's not inherently evil, but they're trying to use it for exactly, purposes. yeah, or or anything in any of the movies actually, <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> except maybe Crystal Skull, where it did, did seem like all she wanted was knowledge. Um, but we'll get to Crystal Skull later. Uh, so the rocks are magic. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess the fact that they're magic is just their blanket answer for anything that they do. Yeah. Because they seem to have the ability to give life. Um, you know, they, they help grow crops. They help, like, protect the village that they're in. And only one of them did that. Um, but, I, yeah, I guess anything to the, that they do is just supposedly magic. Also, there's, like, crystals inside of them or something, but that's a whole other, whole other thing. Um, there's a scene where Indiana Jones is forced to drink blood, which, uh, forces him to go into the black sleep. Um, I think in the movie they state that the blood is supposedly the blood of Kali, 
which doesn't make sense, but whatever. Yeah. Um, my explanation would be that that's just what they say, that's what they believe. Because, like, they but go into a lot of, like, witch doctor voodoo. Yeah, kind of so stuff. I assume so it's, it's su- like... supposed to be actually some blood that's just been, like, yeah. something's been put into it, some kind of hallucinogen yeah, or yeah. something. That you know would make Indiana Jones crazy, yeah. but again, I think that it's just like it's magic I blood. Mean, I grew up Catholic, and we never really actually drank the blood of Christ. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's right, the same similar, thing. similar kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, um, but usually at Sunday school, like it doesn't make you crazy. Uh, I guess. I mean, well, <laughs> it depends on uh, how much of that blood you drink. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really understand how the black sleep supposedly works in the movie, but I guess it's magic or drugs or something there's also voodoo in the movie so again like going with like the witch doctor thing i guess that just works but the the confusing thing is like is that is the movie saying that all that stuff is working because of the rocks being used like is is the fact that the rock is there and it's being used by these people giving them the ability to use this stuff maybe it's actually just normal ass blood but the rocks use the intention of the person using them right so he's like i want this blood to do magic stuff and the right. rock is like you got it it's almost like a genie yeah that, thing. i don't know that that makes really that mean that makes sense not in sense of like mm-hmm. a realistic point but like from the perspective of the movie that right makes sense. um that seems believable so yeah let's go with that we solved yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> we did it guys um this isn't really one where we have much to discuss in terms of like logic i guess but let's talk about the really racist dinner scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to think about the dinner scene. It's so gross. It, it's really, it's really I bad. It. I will say it's it's good in a filmmaking way of like, the the objective of that scene is to make you very uncomfortable and it does that well. Yeah. Um, the politics of that scene are another story. Yep. But it, it, you know, the argument could be made that like, this isn't really reflective of actual uh, cuisine in Indian countries that it is these crazy cult people that are doing that, yep. and this isn't really what you would want to do. But I still don't even understand, even if you're in a crazy cult that is sacrificing people, wouldn't you want a cheeseburger or something? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I like how that's your ultimate food. Like, hey, would you this rich probably want to a cheeseburger? <laughs> I was just trying to think of like something normal. Like, you're sacrificing people in the basement. You want to go upstairs and eat snakes now? What do you want to like have like a normal thing upstairs and do the crazy stuff downstairs? Like some like steak, some quality beef, or yeah, just any know? food that like I mean, even just regular Indian food. Like, yeah, that's what that, I understand. Is like why aren't they just eating regular Indian food? Yeah, um, I don't think Indians eat monkey brain. Um, maybe they do. I don't want to like expect. I don't want to. <laughs> oh yeah, we got monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I would, I would assume it's not. I mean, at least as far as I know, that's not. Yeah, normal shit. Definitely. Um, Are they in India? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's a great scene at the beginning where they land and they, you know, they do the whole jump off the plane with an inflatable raft bit. Then they're in the river and Willie's like, where... Where are we? And Indian Jones goes, India. She's, she goes, how do you know? And he points at an Indian dude standing by the river. <laughs> That's kind of fucked up, yep. too. <laughs> yep. That movie uh, has some issues in, yeah. our, in our current political climate, yeah. for sure. Um, it been, I wish they would have... It wouldn't have been way funny at this point to decide it's in India. That would have been way funny. <laughs> and less offensive. <laughs> um, anyways, I think that's it for Temple of Doom. Let's talk about Last Crusade. So, same with Raiders. Really, the only thing to talk about, I think, is sort of the ending bit. Um, that is obviously the movie where they're, they're after the Holy Grail, mm-hmm. the Cup of Christ, whatever you want to call it. Oh, we find it. the origins of Indiana's name. That's true. Um, it's named after the dog. We also find out the origins of his hat, his fear of snakes, basically everything. Wait, he's, we don't, he's not named after the dog, is he? Yeah, they named the dog Indiana. Yeah, but he, I think the joke was he took Indiana's name... He calls himself that. He's, his name's actually because he calls his dad calls him Junior. So he's yeah, actually, well, because his name is uh, Henry Junior. Yeah, because he's Henry the Second. Yeah, and then named the dog Andy, and then Andy took the dog's name. I always thought that's what that was supposed to be. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Because you said named him after the dog, I thought you meant like. Oh, no, like his no, parents no, named no, after the dog. No, he, <laughs> he took the name, which yeah, is yeah. which I love. Like, yeah. um, I think that's something everybody should do from now on. Yeah. Um, although I never had any dogs with good names growing up. You see, you could be like Waffles. Like, yeah, like, you, that would be your, just your name. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Waffles. Why would you take the dog's name? You could have picked anything. He, he loved archaeology. He could have picked like, you know, he could have done like a Nathan Drake thing yeah, from yeah, Uncharted, yeah. The, the games, where he just named himself after a famous person. Yeah. But he chose the dog's name. Also, what's up with archaeologists taking another name? Like, what's wrong with your, what, you have to have a secret name for some reason? <laughs> You're fucking archaeologist. <laughs> right. 
I guess Lara Croft is just Lara Croft. She yeah. doesn't go by like something mm-hmm. else, something. Although she should. Mm-hmm. Maybe Lara Croft was her cat. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, so the cup of Christ, the Holy Grail, uh, in the film, can only reside in the Temple of the Sun. This is a whole thing. I don't want to dread on this too long because I don't want to have this episode gone forever, and we haven't even got to Crystal Skull. Um, but the interesting thing about the Temple of the Sun is. The cup has to stay there. It cannot leave. If it crosses the seal, it the temple will like uh, fall. It will mm-hmm. it will collapse. Um, but it wasn't always at the temple. The temple was constructed to house it. Um, so was it given that property after it was housed there? And how was it given that property? I mean, maybe the like when the knights took it there, whoever took it there, whatever was just like we're gonna put it here and like then like pray. I, yeah, maybe maybe God was like, sure, it'll yeah. stay there. It's too powerful like, uh, to leave, I yeah. guess, or whatever. Um, although, I mean, I get why somebody like Hitler, who's, you know, wanting the cup, or even the other Nazis, would want it, because, like, then they could live forever. And I guess Hitler's, like, influential enough that he could, you know, living forever would be very bad for him. But I, I just don't know if, like, because they say it's, like, all-powerful, and that's why it needs to be protected. But really, would you... How much damage could one person do if they lived longer? Right. I don't know. I mean, Hitler did a lot of damage, to be fair. A lot. So, I mean, him living longer, I guess, would be very bad. Well, but, but I guess if... Let's just say the only thing that changed in history was he now lived forever. Does That doesn't mean you can't get murdered. It just means you don't That's age. what I would think. So, is, I is mean, that, yeah. he still would have technically died because he killed himself because he's losing the war. So, he still would have lost the war. Right. So I mean, it does say that you can, like, heal yourself. So, if he, if he was shot, he could just quickly pour some water right. on himself. Um... But I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, let's, I guess let's just assume that it, when it was put there, that temple was given those properties. So then there's the thing of um, can the can the Grail actually leave the temple? Because in the movie, it you know kind of falls on that little cliff, and they're uh, first um, I forgot her name because I watched it last night. Uh, the Nazi lady is reaching for it. And she falls to her death trying to get it. Then Indiana's like, I think I can get it. And he, like, fucking touches it. And he's like, I've almost got it. And his dad's like, no, let it go. From a thematic standpoint, that makes sense why he had to let it go. Yeah. But I wondered, like, but if he could have hang- hung on longer, would he have actually been able to take the Grail and leave? Or will the Grail literally not permit that? And it's only tempting you as, like, a test. Because it's all about yeah. tests in that place. Everything's a test. Um... So I don't know. I, I don't think the Grail could actually leave. But if it can't, it's not a fucking danger at all. Yeah. Like, well, I don't even know, I don't even know why you have the other tests to get to the Grail because I mean, it I, can't leave anyways. I guess that from their perspective, you don't want to risk that not being a thing. I guess because like if you're like fuck it, he can't get it out, and then like they got it out, you're like shit. You know, yeah, that's that. true. Because so. they do almost get it out. Yeah, it, it seems. Yeah, that they almost get it out. So maybe they could. Um, also. This always bothered me. It's a little thing, a little nitpicky thing. The first test is kneel, like kneel before God. Mm-hmm. But then when he kneels, so that stops him from getting beheaded. But then there's a second blade in the floor that cuts up. He has to roll. He oh, kneels yeah. and then rolls. I don't know how he knew to roll. Oh, you didn't, you didn't you go to Sunday school and like, <laughs> you kneel, you got to give him a roll. <laughs> I saw a comment online where somebody said that. It was really funny. Um but yeah, that always bothered me. Like, because you know, some like guys like I've got this figured out. I've tracked this down. I'm here. I solved all the tests. Okay, I've got. I know how to do all these. I'll just kneel, and then you get fucking cut in half from below. Maybe the lesson is just like life's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I think that's it for number three. Oh, except maybe for like I don't. I guess you could argue that it's a similar thing to how the Grail can't leave. But how do the other Grails work? That they kill yeah. people, they age them, yeah. and we talked about like. Maybe it's not so much that Indiana Jones chose the right grail. Maybe it's that it's a test itself. And, like, it doesn't even matter which one you choose. It matters who, like, why you're choosing it, why mm-hmm. you took it. And you even said, like, maybe the test isn't that, like, you have to pick the right one necessarily. It's that, like, if you are worthy, you would just pick the right one. Yeah. Like, you would just know that one. Because um, all the other ones are, like, really gaudy. And obviously if you're picking some bejeweled gaudy one, like, you're there for... You know, right? Malice intent. Yeah. Um, although, if you look at it that way, it kind of stands out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's the only one. Exactly. That's not. If you're gonna look for one that stands out, wouldn't you look for the one that 
stands out. Like I, I don't know. I think, I think that's why I think that's why it's such a thing of like if you are worthy, you're going to pick that one because obviously you wouldn't think anything about the other ones. Right. Well, the other ones are just like, oh, this thing's gonna be worth so much money. But it's one of these. Yeah. Or like you know. Um. Anyways. Let's talk about Kingdom of the Crystal just, Skull. Hold on, back on that. I just wish there was like some really dumb like Rainforest Cafe <laughs> mug or something in there. <laughs> some new age one. <laughs> It'd be fucking great. It'd be like the scene in the first one when he like switches the sand and yeah. the, the thing, but he switches the cup yeah. and the <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, somebody edit that video together. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's um, do it. So, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, fuck, man. This movie sucks. Uh, <laughs> Alright, guys. See, see, you later. see you guys next time. Um, when we chose Indiana Jones after our last episode, I was starting to get a little worried because I was like, these movies are pretty grounded in reality. Like, will we have that much to talk about? And I actually think there is enough in the trilogy, but rewatching Crystal Skull made me realize, like, fuck, we. I don't, I don't want to drag this on. I want to make this quick. Also, I have to go to work. Um,. But we could talk about this for like two hours. Yeah. Crystal Skull has so many problems. And again, I'm not here, we're not here to try to shit on movies or talk about like plot structure and things like that. So let's talk about the universe things that they add that cause more problems than answers. Um, let's just, let's just get the, the big one out of the bag. There are interdimensional beings in this movie. This film takes the point to not refer to them as aliens. There's even a part where Shia LaBeouf goes, says something like, what are these, spacemen? And <laughs> Ox, the extra guy, is like, no, interdimensional beings. And then at the end, they leave, and Indiana Jones is like, oh, did they go back to space? And he's like, no, they're not fucking spacemen. They went to the space between spaces. That's a direct line. Uh, that's when they drop the F-bomb in the movie. <laughs> um, I didn't push that envelope. <laughs> so it's just so interesting because, like, why? Well, that's it. <laughs> See you next time. I mean, I feel like that's a... I mean, that could really be said for the whole entire movie, just why. But, I mean, this movie so, didn't need to come out ever. It didn't need to exist. Yeah. There's no point for it. Yes. They didn't put the same effort or anything as in the other ones. You just were like, hey, the Crystal Skulls, that's something. Let's make a movie about that, you know? Where, I mean, they took a real big turn from everything else is kind of based on these... Like long-standing historical, like religious artifacts. Yeah, and then this was just nothing. Well, this that's was... why I was excited at first because I knew that the prequels are bad at this point. But George Lucas wasn't the screenwriter or the director for this. Yeah, his ideas were being used, but they had a different screenwriter, and they had fucking Spielberg directing, who you know had made some bad stuff before. He made you know bad sequels like Jurassic Park too. But like you know he'd done the Indiana Jones movies really well, and he'd made a lot of good movies. Um, very few bad movies. And Harrison Ford was back. Like, and I liked... I had heard of Crystal Skulls before the movie. I don't think a lot of people had. But I had heard of those, and I was interested in that. I didn't think they were going to go the alien route. But see, I think that's the problem. Is just... I mean, it sounds exciting because you know it's something real. But then you think about it, it's just like... Yeah, but does this kind of make sense in this universe? Like, does this going to feel weird yeah. in this universe? And I feel like when you think about Step Back Now, it's like... Yeah, that's going to be kind of weird. Yeah, I think it would have been smarter to... Because I think the thing about these movies is they always want to have the thing at the end where they're like, guess what? It is real. I think it would have been played smart to do the opposite at the end of this one where they're like, maybe it is aliens. Maybe it is. And it's like, nope. It's this explanation. Yeah. It's perfectly reasonable like, explanation. In the Ark of the Covenant, like, you don't see God. Yeah. Or, like, you don't see Jesus come out and that. So, like, you don't see these things. It's just like, exactly. it's the magic around these things. Yeah. And I mean, but this one is just like, no, here's here's the aliens. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, like, kind of But it's weird. not even that. It, so it's bad enough that they did aliens. Weird enough. But then they even took it a step further by being like, they're interdimensional beings. Yeah. Like, it's like they just didn't know when to stop with the... They just kept going with yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. And then they're like, okay, it's not just interdimensional beings. It's it's 13 that are technically one, and it's a hive mind. And it, it just it's a point where it's like, how did nobody go, hey, for... Because the, here's the thing about the Indiana Jones movies. They're very simple. Mm -hmm. I love the movies. They're great. But they're fucking simple plots. It is this guy found out about this thing... Bad guys want it. He wants to get it first. That is the basic premise of every one of the movies. It's even the basic premise of this one. But this one decides to complicate it so much. Yeah. That it's just like... They're trying to throw stuff at you so often that it's so different constantly that you're just like, why did nobody think that this was too much? Yeah. Maybe they were worried that going simple would be not enough for a fourth movie in a series. You know, there's like... Now we need to make it even crazier. I don't know. I... 
there's a lot of think pieces on this movie. But what I'm really curious about still too is like, if this movie had done better, do you think they were really going to probably spin off with Mutt or whatever? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I don't think Spielberg would have. But yeah, I, I like bet he would have relinquished the rights. Because yeah. he'd done that before. Like, they had young Indiana Jones as the series. Like, it's not like Spielberg just, was so precious love... with that franchise that he wasn't willing to let it breathe. I'm just, I'm just kind of bummed we didn't get a series called Mutt Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just realized something. The Shadow Buff? <laughs> <laughs> no. He took, it, he took his name after a dog. Dog, Yeah. <laughs> Real dog theme going on in the joke. Did they family. do that on purpose? They must have done that on purpose. Because I, I, I mean, to, so I did watch the movie, going to be honest. Sort of half watched it. I had it on on my tablet while I was playing video games because I didn't really want to pay attention to it. Yeah. So maybe there was a line where, I don't remember if they have a joke where he's like, where'd you get your name after a dog? I don't know if that's a line or yeah. anything. It probably is. I think they do talk, they mentioned his name for something, but I don't remember what the joke was. Oh, I remember the joke is he's like, what's your name? Mutt. Kind of a name is Mutt. But I don't remember him being like, I named myself after the dog. Who, who asked him? Was his dad is the one asking? Yeah. I mean, well, I would be, I would have thrown back. What kind of fucking name's Indiana? <laughs> I mean, come on. I think they do say that. They yeah. too. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's, that's the obvious choice. Anyways, let's talk about these. I'm just going to call them aliens because I don't want to say interdimensional beings every time. Yeah. Let's talk about these fucking aliens. Um, this movie has no clue how fucking magnets work. Um, and you could argue that, like, well, technically it's not normal magnets because the skulls are made out of crystal. Mm-hmm. So they have magnetic principles, but they aren't magnets, which I guess is the explanation for them not so, working consistently at all. So Miracles came out after this movie. It did? Do you think, like, <laughs> yes. J.S. Ellis was like, yes. how the fuck do these magnets work? And yep. like, science is like, no, I watched Crystal Skulls. That's, the, That's some alien shit. I actually think that, um, uncredited, there was a couple extra screenwriters. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I just like that just thinking that he's sitting in the theater and he sees us like oh shit aliens invented magnets no way I like that there's maybe like some like person sitting in front of him in a row and like the magnet stuff started happening and the guy in front of him was like how does that work and and Violent J's just like how does that, that work, work? <laughs> <laughs> he like got up and left the theater and was yeah. like I'm gonna write a song about this, this. Um, he, and he like go, like went to Yahoo Answers and asked it everybody's giving all these scientific answers he's like you guys are fucking lying to me I know the government lies about <laughs> aliens <laughs> I've seen it <laughs> he, thought he, he thought it was a documentary <laughs> <laughs> it's like the other one took place in, with the Nazis. Those are real. Nazis were well, they're, real. They're, so. they're a religious group too. So like, well, I know all the God stuff's real because That's you know true. God's real. That's so. true. We just figured out. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, really, how do the magnets work in this movie? <laughs> I don't want to sound like too much of a juggalo, but th- the problem is that the magnets have no consistency with how they work. Yeah, there are scenes when people's guns will get pulled towards the thing. Dog tags fly off. Coins fly at the magnets. Knives, you know, all kinds of shit, but it's never consistent because it's never constant. Like one of the things I was thinking about is they go to this warehouse full of a billion boxes. They find this box by throwing gunpowder in the air. All the gunpowder flies to the box. Um, do none of the other boxes have magnetic things in them? Wouldn't those automatically pull to it? Right. Like, because even the scene when they first open up the box, everybody's like holding the gun and their guns like pull them towards the box. And you could argue like, well, the box was like sort of. Um, you know, keeping a, a a net around the magnet so that it wasn't pulling everything close. But then, how did the gunpowder fly to it from right. across the entire warehouse? It wasn't like they threw it up and it went to the box two feet away. It, they had to follow it over and over throughout the whole warehouse. They kept doing the gunpowder bit, so they were searching for it for you know, thirty minutes probably. It's, they, they never. I mean, they just go really skimpy on never really letting you know how powerful this magnet is. Yeah. Because like once someone was like you said, they want to make it seem like it's really powerful. Other moments are just like, oh, it's just like a magnet. Yeah. There's a scene that I, I talked to you about where they find the crystal skull and there's some coins on the ground and the coins are just st- there on the ground. No problem. They're not, mm-hmm. they're just sitting there. Indiana Jones picks up the coins and as soon as he does, they fly out of his hand and land on the, the crystal skull. Yeah. And it's like, what was the foot of difference between them there and there? Because it's not even like they sort of, you know, slightly move in his hand. They fly the fuck out of his hand. Yeah. This magnet's powerful as fuck. Well, it's, and again, it's, I, I know it's not how a real magnets work, but it, with a real magnet, because that's our only comparison, if, if a magnet is so powerful that something flies from across the room onto it, you can't just casually take that thing off. Yeah. It's magnetically attracted to it. You can't just... They, they just pull stuff off the skull like it's well, fucking stickers. They make it seem like it's one of those things where, like, if I fucking let go of this thingy, it's just going to, boom, fly to it. Yeah. So, like you are saying earlier with the car chase scene, like, why wouldn't that... 
There's so much metal in that scene. Why wouldn't that skull be attracted to any of that? Metal? I, I think it would even like fuck up the car. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, wouldn't like the engine you're, like you're on, pull out of the they're top? on two fucking cars. It's, uh, even when they're tossing back and forth, whatever, it's not immediately gonna go boom to the car. Like yeah, if it's something attracted to metal, it's immediately gonna fly towards the metal. Which would have made that scene kind of more fun. Yeah, if like they're like quick catch it and they it, it's gonna go to somebody, but then it like zooms off to the side. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Not that that scene needed more fun because it yeah, has monkeys that Shia LaBeouf that. tames. There's a lot going on in that scene. There's a lot of not good things going on in that scene. Um... So that's it for the Magnus. I mean, I could keep talking about that, but let's get to one of the biggest things about this movie, The Fridge. We don't need to talk too much about The Fridge, because I think everybody knows the score. I like how you said it just like, such a serious show. Yeah. <laughs> the Fridge. That's a, that's it's like a, the most important thing about the movie, The Fridge. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how seriously I take that scene. It's fucking terrible. Um, obviously, we don't need to tell you that that's not possible, mm-hmm. but it's very not possible. And the thing I, mean, I, I get it's based off... Like a, a myth or something like that, too, right? Yeah, because George it. Lucas believes it's possible. Yeah. But that's why I always bring up the point that I see few people bring up. I'm sure people have definitely brought it up. But I always say, okay, fine. It can... Being inside a lead line fringe can protect you from, from the nuclear wave. It'll, you'll be fine. Okay, whatever. The explosion won't hurt you. The radiation won't hurt you. Fine. Getting blasted upwards of 70, 80 miles an hour into the sky... And hitting the ground hard and bouncing and rolling is not something you walk away from. No. Even if somehow you survive that, your bones would be fucked. Yeah. Indiana Jones gets out and walks away like it's There's fucking nothing. nothing. Yeah. I mean, when you're in a car that's going 70 miles an hour and you go off of a cliff and land at the bottom, the same way that the fridge flies into the air and lands at the bottom, you don't walk away from that car like it's nothing. Right. And I mean, well, you I, mean, I guess you could argue with that one that you're moving with the impact. Like, sure. maybe if he was, like, you know, he's not moving around anywhere. Yeah. But, I mean, that still, it still applies. You still have the impact going in. Yeah, exactly. You're still going to have that... Impact doesn't have to be a physical thing. Impact has, has like, the whole wave thing going through. So once yeah. you hit that, that rush is going to go immediately through your entire body. Yeah. Like, you're going to hit that, and it's going to go boom, and everything's going to fucking break. Right. So, I mean, there's no way he would literally survive that. Yeah. It's impossible. I mean, not, I mean maybe not die, but, like... There's no way he would he walk. Gets he gets up like it's walking. No, yeah, it's crazy. That's. I mean, it's a. It may block gamma rays or whatever, but it's not going to fucking block, like impact. Yeah. Um, Unless that's the one to drum fucking fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's got like the foam from Demolition Man inside. Yeah. No, it's it's the real Cabinet of the Arc. <laughs> <laughs> um. What else? Uh. There's a this this actually makes me mad. There's a there's the scene when all the ants which are based on real ants called driver ants or siafu ants. They are all, like, swarming and attacking everybody. And there's a part where Kate Blanchett climbs a vine to get away, and the That's ants make a... That's my favorite ant. <laughs> Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. Um, she uh, tries to get away, and they make a ladder to go towards her. And I watched the movie last night, and I was like, fuck off. You looked it up, and apparently ants can do that. Yeah, ants can do that. That's and that makes do. me so mad because that's so <laughs> stupid. But it's real, and that that makes it even worse. It'd be like if we found out the fridge thing works. Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. be so mad. I'd be like, "Fuck you." Yeah, yeah. Um, so that sucks. Uh, <laughs> I guess let's just um, let's finish out with trying to figure out what happens at the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, we have these interdimensional beings. There's thirteen skeletons. Which are apparently a hive mind. They all come together at the end to form one being. Um, so I assume that at some point that being separated into 13 parts for some reason. I guess you said maybe to like spread out, like do more, get mm-hmm. more done. Um, then I guess those beings... It's, so it seems like since they're technically... This is our theory on what happens. This isn't necessarily yeah, what yeah, the movie yeah. says. But what we came to the conclusion of is after they were separated into 13 different bodies... One of them was murdered by somebody, or, I don't know, maybe freak accident. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they tried to get in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, he got beheaded, and then, since that was technically one part of the... Because even though the 13 bodies, they are one life force, so when one got beheaded, they all kind of died. Yeah. All, or decayed. Their minds stayed alive. Um, kind of like Sauron, I guess. <laughs> um, but then we assume this tribe... Um, who worshipped them brought their skeletons back to this sort of throne altar room in the spaceship yeah, and placed them there except for the skull which they couldn't find. Although, you know, I want to say in the movie though it says that somebody 
stole the skull from there. So they were just chilling there? For, like, what reason? Yeah, that's what I can't figure out. Is they all just chilled there until they died and became skeletons? Because they weren't originally skeletons, at least as far as like, we know, because they become a flesh the first thing to get the skull back is leave. Yeah. So if they, like, wanted to leave forever ago, why didn't they leave? Yeah. See, because now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure they do say, yeah, somebody came to the site and stole the skull. But let's... Let's retcon that. Yeah, I think our answer is better. Ours is way better. I think ours makes more sense. Somebody saw this freaky fucking alien and beheaded it because it was yeah. like, what the fuck? And that killed the other ones because they were all part of the same being. And that's why they couldn't leave. Yeah. So. That this, makes way more sense than whatever the fuck they Normally were. we try to look for the answers based on actual logic in the movies. So this is the first time we're rewriting the plot because <laughs> this yeah. really sucks. Yeah. So our answer is better. Um. I think that's a good way to end the episode. We, yeah. we fixed... Well, we didn't fix it, but... We, <laughs> we helped. We helped we improved, a little bit. We improved, we improved it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this week. Um, we are actually going to have a very brief hiatus. By that, I mean in two weeks, we would normally have our next episode, but we will not be having it. Our next episode will be in four weeks, so we're skipping one because we're about to move. We're going to be very busy. Um, so we'll be back, but not at our normal time. We're going to be back in one month. Um, and since it's a little bit of a longer wait, we wanted to come back with our best episode yet. Yeah. So next time we're going to be talking about Shrek. Hell yeah. Obviously. Um, the whole Shrek universe, the, the, uh, Shrek CU. Um, so if you have any questions about <laughs> Shrek, um, oh, I guess this includes the Puss in Boot movie, which I just remember yeah, yeah. came out. I yeah, literally so just, universe, so anything in yeah, the universe. exactly. Any of the, the straight to DVDs. Mm-hmm. Shrek scared is that one scared scared Shrekless or something? Yeah, it is now. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, first of all, if you have any comments about what we talked about this time, uh, go ahead and let us know. You can email us at tsofpodcast at gmail dot com. You can also leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at twitter dot com slash the wet rats. Um, also, you can subscribe to our YouTube to see these episodes as they come out, um, or you can subscribe on iTunes. We're also there. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about this episode, if you have any questions that we can discuss next time for Shrek, if you want to know how sex works with Shrek, mm -hmm. send us an email and we'll talk about it. Although, honestly, we're going to talk about it anyways. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Um, what's a, what's a good Indiana Jones last line? You belong in a museum. He says that, right? Yeah. Is that him? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>